That's me, back in second grade. Why was I up there? I saw something. At least, I could have sworn I saw something. During Percy's youth, he had never encountered a pegasi, and it wasn't until the second book, The Sea of Monsters, that he had finally met the pegasus, Blackjack. We see Grover and Percy with some mythomagic cards. However, Percy is not introduced to the mythomagic game until Nico introduces it to him in the third book, The Titan's Curse. Also, Percy and Grover are described as looking slightly different. While they do appear to be the correct age, Percy is said to have jet black hair and sea green eyes, while Grover is said to have brown hair and the start of a wispy beard. I named you after him, and against all odds, he managed to find his way to a happy ending. This flashback of learning the origins of Percy's name does not occur in the first book. We do not learn about the origins of Percy's name until the Sea of Monsters. When you're ready to hear what the gods have in store for you, they'll tell you, I believe in you, and I believe You'll be needing this. Hmm? Hang on to that. It is a mighty instrument. Mr. Brunner does not give Percy the pen at this point. He only chucks the pen at Percy as a way to save him when he's attacked by the Fury. Percy then returns the pen and does not keep it like he does in the show. Mr. Brunner is also described as being middle-aged and having thinning but still semi-long brown hair. Percy does cause Nancy to end up in the fountain, however it is described as the water grabbing her rather than Percy telekinetically pushing her in. <laughs> Percy's pen is never shown to vibrate when monsters are nearby. Where is it, Half-Blood? Where is it? Miss Dodds instantly begins to attack Percy in front of everyone after the push. However, in the books, he's lured away into the gift shop and is isolated before the attack begins. Miss Dodds also dives at Percy more than once, and Percy actually has to swing his sword to kill her, instead of Miss Dodds dying instantly after Percy uncaps his pen, like in the show. Is he dead? Give him some room, please. Percy does not pass out right after the fight, but rather walks out of the museum to talk to Grover about the situation. Percy had told me earlier in the day that he wanted to get back at Nancy for all she'd done to us. Grover? And he isn't being truthful about what happened at the fountain. Grover! Excuse me. Are you saying you saw Mr. Jackson assault Miss Bobo Finn? Yes. Grover is shown here as ratting out Percy for pushing Nancy, however, in the books, the exact opposite thing occurs, where Grover actually tries to take the blame for the incident and tries to absolve Percy of any wrongdoing. Hello, Percy. Hey, Eddie. Sorry about that. Well, I'm walking out. You're walking in. I should be apologizing to you. Eddie is shown as a plumber here, but he is actually supposed to be one of Gabe's poker buddies playing inside with him. Oh, is that all you gotta say to me? Huh? After failing out of school? Fail out of school? Your principal called, and that's what he said. Said you got kicked out. Percy was not expelled for this incident with Nancy. He actually spent the rest of the year at Yancey Academy and did not come home until several months later, at which point Yancey Academy asked him not to return. Also, Gabe is supposed to be playing poker with his buddies instead of gambling online. But still, if you're gonna live under my roof, you gotta live by my rules. Your roof? My mom is the only one employed here. Gabe actually did have a job as the manager of an electronics store. I don't know how anyone expects me to get any work done. Percy and I are leaving for Montauk. I, uh, I'll have the car back by Sunday morning. Whoa, 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 whoa. Since when are you going to Montauk? I called to reserve the place as soon as I got off the phone with Yancey. Sally had actually been planning this trip for much longer and had mentioned it many times before to Gabe. But if you make this miserable, I'm gonna go anyway. 
and then I'm gonna eat my sandwich and yours while I listen to the game on the radio. You know, I hate watching the Knicks alone. So do I. But make sure they put the hot peppers on my sandwich, Not please. if you're gonna ask like that. I said please. Sally actually never talks back to Gabe and tries to appease him to the best of her ability in the books. As Gabe in the books is far more aggressive than as shown here, Sally puts up with it in the books for the sake of Percy due to Gabe's odor concealing Percy, which is never mentioned in the show. Percy has a nightmare where he is facing a mysterious shadowy figure on the beach. This never takes place in the books and is unique to the series. The stories that I have told you about Greek gods and heroes and monsters, they are real. Sally reveals to Percy that he is a demigod and that all of the Greek myths are real. While Sally does tell Percy that his father wanted him to go to summer camp, she never mentions the Greek myths. He does not learn that he is a demigod until waking up in Camp Half-Blood. I asked how the night you said we could all leave in the morning. Sorry, I'm early, but I didn't have any choice. Things have changed. This is all developing a lot faster than we anticipated. Early? Grover does not come this early and only appears in the middle of the night after Percy is already asleep and has the dream of seeing Zeus and Poseidon fighting. Is that the Minotaur? Percy does not realize that he's being chased by a Minotaur until much later on. The Minotaur does not cause the car to crash. The crash is caused by what Percy perceives as lightning. <laughs> Percy does not have Riptide during the start of his battle with the Minotaur as originally he returned the pen back to Mr. Brunner after defeating Miss Dodds. But Percy does end up killing the Minotaur in the same way as he did in the books. Hush, Annabeth. He's waking. Everyone, give him some space, please. Welcome to camp, Percy Jackson. The episode ends with Percy waking up in Camp Half-Blood, surrounded by Chiron, Annabeth, and the other campers, which is a word-for-word reenactment of the books, so no changes are made here.